judiciary is not in any capacity able to enter into any agreement with the executive, especially in a matter that is before court. The judiciary was not a party in that uh, course, and I tried myself to look at the creep where His Excellency the President was quoted to have said he entered into an agreement with the judiciary. I'm a judge, I'm not a communication expert, but what I could say or deduce from that conversation is that it was taken out of context or there was misinterpretation because what His Excellency was saying is that he agreed with the judgment of the court that gave directions on what needed to be done uh, to create a framework on how to administer the housing levy. And what he was telling Kenyans is that the executive has complied with the directions given in the judgment to come up with a framework which is uh, the Housing Levy Act. I would like to assure Kenyans is that the judiciary was not a party in that matter. The judiciary was dechanging our function of determining a dispute which was before us. We are independent, we are impartial, we were not parties to the case, therefore we had no capacity or local standard, as they call it, to enter into an agreement with the executive. Thank you. In the first half of 2023-2024 financial year, this court posted a rate clearance of 166% of the cases that were resolved. This was really commendable. Because out of the, in the same period, 2,060 cases were filed, and you were able to resolve those 2,060 cases in terms of numbers, and went beyond, actually because you resolved 3,414 um, during the first half of this financial year. I would be remiss of me to conclude without addressing the question of the proposed constitutional amendment that seeks to merge the two special rights courts of equal status with the High Court. I understand this discussion is live, and I have already written to the leaders of our parliament expressing the judiciary's position, opposing most vehemently the mixed degree approach as proposed in the proposed constitutional amendment as not being ideal. <laughs> there was an informed reason why Kenyans during the constitutional making process demanded for a specialized attention to the areas of employment and labor relations and also environment and land. And that rationale has not gone away. We are just scratching the surface to deal with our labor issues. And therefore, we cannot revert to the old practice where the cases of labor were piling up in our system. The contribution that we have seen from the two courts is a testament to expeditious delivery of justice and also the development of a robust jurisprudence in these areas of special concern to Kenyans that actually justify the continued existence of the two specialized courts. So rest assured that we will not allow any amendment to the Constitution to take away our labor and our labor. As a ministry, you have afforded us much relief in the many landmark decisions on diverse and complex matters without mentioning any in particular. We also the types of employment, organization of work, employment relationships are quickly evolving 
and there is no doubt there is need to adjust the legal framework for promotion of justice, equity, and industrial peace and harmony. We must defend and promote labor rights in the platform of work, remote working, and in other typical forms. Our laws need to accommodate all workers without distinction and to ensure that all workers are afforded dignity, security, and fair treatment. Currently, we are finalizing on partnership arrangements with a number of partners, including the European Union, the US Department of Labor, the ILO, to enable us kickstart the process. Madam CJ, it is not only you who complains of the budget, you also complain. And so, once in a while, we also partner with this our stakeholders to be able to support us in some of the activities. The achievements made in ensuring that justice is served in the labor sector, there is a backlog of unresolved cases. And the use of ADR, court annex mediation, has been particularly useful in restoring peace and order in the labor sector. We need to enhance our efforts towards this direction and we will be inviting you soon for a social dialogue forum to explore ways and means to achieving the desired results, especially within the pre-court process. It is imperative that we address the existing hurdles urgently to ensure that citizens are not denied their constitutional right to access justice. Over a period uh, the financial, uh, financial, during the financial year 2023-2024, July to December 2023 only, the caseload statistics report that I looked at showed that the court, that is my court, the Court of Appeal, had 8,443 pending civil appeals. And of those pending appeals, 1,000 334 are appeals emanating from the 21 judges of the Employment and Labor Relations Court. From Nairobi alone, over that six months period, we received 891 appeals. And these are appeals that are coming to two civil benches literally coming to two judges, because we have only two civil benches in Nairobi.